Hey guys, so I hope you all are doing well in this social distancing situation that we're in. And if you aren't social distancing but have the option to, please take this seriously and do that. My content will continue as always because nothing is really changing for me. I, you know, I leave the house on occasion, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm used to being at home all the time. I'm an only child too, so I'm also used to being alone a lot. <laughs> Hopefully I can make some decent content for you guys during this time so you have something to watch. And today's video is definitely something to watch because, oh my gosh, it's probably gonna be like 30 minutes long. It might honestly be my longest video. I've ever done. I'm not sure. <laughs> I've actually been wanting to talk about American Horror Story for so long on this channel. Like I wrote down these ideas years ago. I felt like now was the right time to do it since 1984 just came out. And obviously we all know that Richard Ramirez was a main character in that season. Also, this video is actually a collab with myself, with my horror channel. So if you wanna watch me rank all of the existing American Horror Stories from worst to best, go check out my horror channel video and subscribe while you're over there. It's a good time if you love horror. Now, I generally love American Horror Story, specifically the early seasons, and that doesn't make it exempt from criticism or the fact that they do sometimes exploit killers and their victims. Is this true in every example of them portraying a killer? No, of course not. And like usual, this entire video is purely my opinion. So I'm only gonna state that once. It is my opinion. I know some of y'all are gonna disagree with this video and the video on my horror channel. That's fine. If you do, leave a comment. Obviously, I don't have a huge issue with the fictional killers that are portrayed in American Horror Story, even some of the real killers that are portrayed in American Horror Story because it is a horror show at the end of the day. And I don't think that those themes should be off limits. However, there is a tasteful and entertaining way to go about portraying real killers, and then there's ways that make it feel more like fiction than reality. Most of the time, American Horror Story will lean towards the latter option. For context, a few movies that I thought did a very decent job at portraying real killers without straying too far from reality were My Friend Dahmer and Extremely Wicked. I've done videos on both of those, so I will link them down below if you want to hear my thoughts. So often, Sometimes American Horror Story will take characteristics of a real killer and turn them into a character for the show that feels like fiction. And so we connect with them as a person, as a character, as a fictional character, because we're not really confronted with the reality of their crimes. They sometimes will also sprinkle in some fictional elements to the character as well, so they feel even more like a fictional character. And so they don't actually portray the killer in a realistic way. It almost feels like they're going the extra step and making the character feel even more like fiction to fit into their fictional storyline, sometimes even glorifying and romanticizing real killers. Also, I wanna say before we break down every single killer in American Horror Story, they have portrayed a real life killer in all but one season, which that one season also had problematic issues, which we'll talk about, and portrayed 20 different killers. That's right, 20 different real life killers, either inspired by or directly portrayed in the show. And if you wanna hear my thoughts on each season, specifically as a show, like entertainment, go watch my horror video. So the issue I have with creating a character around a real life serial killer and adding fictional elements to it, or even embracing some of their human traits that they had in real life, it just further distances the viewer from the actual horrific crimes that they committed. And we already have time doing that. The more time that passes, the less these people feel like real people. So I'm going to go in order of season and break down each and every real killer that they portrayed in their show. But first, since we're going to be starting with Murder House, we have to talk about the portrayal of Tate Langdon. So the first topic I want to cover in today's video isn't necessarily the amount of real killers portrayed in the show, but how killers are often portrayed in American Horror Story. Both the real killers and the fictional killers. And if anything, this might actually be a bigger issue than the amount of real killers portrayed in their show, because most of the killers in American Horror Story are portrayed as sexy, desirable, attractive, etc. Now, I don't have an issue casting attractive people as killers in fiction shows, and even when they're portraying real life killers, casting conventionally attractive actors, because that was reality at the time, 
and people do romanticize killers and find them attractive, unfortunately, even still to this day. But American Horror Story kind of pushes the limit, I feel, and not just cast conventionally attractive actors, but they also make them wear minimal clothing at times, or they give them full-on love stories. A few examples of this are Dandy from Freak Show, Richard Ramirez, of course, in 1984, and Tate Langton from Murder House. Now, one could argue that Tate Langdon was based on real life school shooters such as Columbine, but I do think it's just a fictional telling of a school shooter. I don't think he's actually based in reality at all. But still, you cannot deny that he was not glamorized and romanticized in his relationship with Violet. Oh, should I put in a spoiler alert now if you haven't seen any of the seasons and you want to? Um, I'm gonna be talking a lot about the seasons, so yeah, probably spoilers throughout this video. Now, it's okay to feel sympathy for his character because at the end of the day it is a fictional killer so if you feel for him and you feel sympathy for him that's okay but don't extend that sympathy towards real life school shooters because those are not the same. Sadly I think many teens could not separate this emotion and I think Murder House and Tate specifically kind of ignited a huge wave of hyperstophilia especially on Tumblr. I think once they saw this season and became attracted to Tate because he was way way overly romanticized on the internet. <laughs> they then looked to real life shooters and started romanticizing them. Now they were always romanticized because that's just something that a small part of society does for some reason, but I do feel like after Murder House came out and Tate and Violet's relationship was shown a lot of teens really wanted what they had, which was of course a tragic love story, so I don't get it. I think it does kind of get old as a viewer to consistently watch the show and just have sexy killer after sexy killer portrayed in all the se almost all the seasons. And then also paired with real life killers, sometimes the real life killers are portrayed in a sexual way or an attractive way, I guess, a desirable way. I don't think it's done in the best of taste all the time and maybe the show is helping to facilitate a little bit of hyperstophilia. So the next portrayal isn't actually a killer, rather a famous victim, Elizabeth Short and the Black Dahlia. Now I wanna reiterate that I don't think killers and victims should be completely off limits when it comes to horror movies, but in this season specifically, they change many, many of the details regarding Elizabeth Short and her death to make it more disturbing. I do think they took it a little bit too far in making her a full-on fictional character and changing a lot of details. And just in general, I believe Elizabeth Short is one of the most exploited deaths in history. So the next portrayal in Murder House and the last portrayal of a real life situation in Murder House was Richard Speck. So I believe it was in the second episode that we see a couple of nurses bound and killed in the dorm, which then turned into Murder House, of course. And Ryan Murphy had actually stated while the nurses weren't based on real life individuals, the scene was inspired by Richard Speck and the massacre that occurred in 1966. Of course, the show is a toned down version of what actually happened in reality. If you wanna look into it, if you've never heard of it before, do that, but trigger warning, if you're gonna look into it. I don't think that the show took it too far when it came to recreating the murders because it wasn't directly recreated, thank God. So personally, I don't really have an issue with the portrayal of it in the show. Now we're moving on to Asylum. I really gotta pick up the pace with this video or we're gonna be here for 45 minutes, not 30. Now, Asylum is hands down my favorite season, spoiler alert for my horror video that I did on the ranking of them. Asylum's my favorite season, but that does not make it immune from its flaws. Now, obviously there's a lot of mental illness portrayed in the season, and I think some people see it as exploitative, and I'm very sensitive to that kind of issue of exploiting mental illnesses for horror purposes. I feel like they showed an accurate yet disturbing side of what was really happening in the middle of the last century. I have thought about also doing a video on mental illnesses portrayed in American Horror Story and how accurate they are and if they were in fact exploitative. So that's still on the list. Again, wrote that down years ago. Let's see if I actually do it one day. So we have two killers in the show that are only inspired by real life killers. So I respect that they did not do a direct portrayal of the real life killers because I feel like that's a little bit 
more risky to do. So Dr. Oliver Threatson was based on Ed Gein and Grace Bertrand was based on Lizzie Borden. Since the characters are just loosely based on these real life killers, I don't really have an issue with how they were portrayed in the show. They weren't recreating the actual murders and representing actual victims of these killers. Some could argue it's still offensive because they do show their crimes and they are similar to their killer counterparts, but I personally don't feel like they crossed the line in this season. And I'm really not trying to be biased because it's my favorite season and like justify the flaws within it because there are some, it's not a perfect season. <laughs> there was one thing portrayed in Asylum that was a little bit touchy and again, victim, not a killer, Anne Frank. So Asylum also featured an Anne Frank storyline which Ryan Murphy actually said was based on all the women who suffered with schizophrenia and after World War II claimed to be the real Anne Frank. He says he likes to incorporate historical figures such as Anne Frank and the Black Dahlia in Murder House, which he says was a case that was never solved so we solved that case in our own way. I mean I would love to hear your thoughts if you think that putting historical figures who suffered is in poor taste and putting it in a fictional show like this. I don't think that they should be off limits necessarily, but there, I think that there is a right and a wrong way to go about it, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it down below. Moving on to Coven, so we have two killers in this that are actually direct depictions of real life killers. They're probably a little bit lesser known, but real just the same. We have the X-Man of New Orleans and Madame Delphine LaLaurie. Now I don't want to spend too long on the backstory of all the killers and everything because again we're going to be here for an hour, so I'll give you a little bit of backstory though when it comes to these people. So the X-Man of New Orleans was an active killer from 1918 to 1919 who killed six people and he was never found. And the case is still unsolved to this day. Now there was a theory floating around because of a letter that he actually wrote that he was just trying to pr promote jazz music because he had said that he would spare the people who were playing jazz in their homes and wouldn't kill them. So American Horror Story was inspired by him of course and wrote him as a fictional character in Coven and did what American Horror Story does best and that is give him a tragic love story with Jessica Lange's character. Madame Delphine LaLaurie was played by Kathy Bates in the show and was a socialite based in 19th century New Orleans. So a fire had actually started in her house and when the responders got there they discovered slaves bound and tortured in her attic. And LaLaurie's character in American Horror Story is so far removed from the actual history that happened. They do portray some of her crimes in the show, which is disturbing to watch, but what happens to her in the show is almost so fictionalized. They obviously add in a lot of fiction to her character, so I'm not sure if these two killers are necessarily crossing the line, but you tell me your thoughts on Coven. Freak Show, here we have two killers that are inspired by real life killers. So we have Twisty the Clown, which of course represents John Wayne Gacy. Now obviously American Horror Story isn't the first show or movie to portray a killer clown and it is a genuine fear and phobia for a lot of people, so I don't think it should be off limits just because Gacy existed. Not all killer clowns are necessarily Gacy inspired, so I don't really see an issue with Twisty the Clown in American Horror Story. Primarily because the character of Twisty just seems really misguided in a lot of ways, and Gacy was obviously like legitimately cold blooded in his murders, and Twisty just felt different to that, so I don't think it was a genuine portrayal or even genuinely inspired by. And there is actually a psychological reason why people are afraid of clowns and why that phobia exists and it has nothing to do with Gacy. The other killer that is inspired by a real killer is Jimmy Darling who is inspired by Grady Franklin Stiles Jr. Jimmy is based on a real life person who had a similar condition with his hands named Grady Franklin Stiles Jr. who did actually kill one person in real life. Now there are of course major major differences between the two. Like I said, probably very loosely inspired by the actual killer in real life. Again, another sexualized character in the show for no reason. <laughs> Next we have the season that has by far the most serial killers portrayed in the show, albeit not all of them are permanent or ongoing characters, which is better. The first being the, kind of the main character of the show played by Evan Peters, yet again, uh, James 
Patrick March, who is loosely inspired by H.H. Holmes, and the hotel kind of being loosely inspired by the Cecil Hotel. So the real life Cecil Hotel opened in 1924 and soon became famous for all the mysterious deaths that took place there. This does actually connect a lot of the stories within American Horror Story because as you know, if you're a fan of the show or a viewer, you know that they all connect in some way. But in reality, Richard Ramirez was known to stay there and Elizabeth Short had been seen drinking at the hotel bar. So why this season was based on the Cecil Hotel is a little bit disturbing to me. So Ryan Murphy had actually stated in an interview that this season was very much inspired by the hotel after the Elisa Lamb mysterious death, which of course was the most recent incident at this hotel in 2013. So H.H. H. Holmes was also a source of inspiration for this season. He was a famous serial killer in the early or late 19th century rather, who opened a strange hotel where he would kill his victims or so he claimed. He claimed to have killed 27 people, but was only charged with nine confirmed murders. But he is suspected of killing over 200 people in this hotel. There is an episode called Devil's Night where all the serial killers make an appearance. Hosted by Mr. March, inspired by H.H. H. Holmes, there's a serial killer dinner party and attending, we have Aileen Wernos, Richard Ramirez, Jeffrey Dahmer, John Wayne Gacy, and the Zodiac Killer, whose face we don't see for obvious reasons. Now they do this in a very fictional way, which I'm not sure how to feel about that. There is a murder portrayed and like jokes made about Jeffrey Dahmer eating the victim and things. And it is like a shorter scene in the grand scheme of things. It's not a major plot point in the whole show, although Aileen Wernos is kind of a character throughout the show. I think it's a odd idea to have all of these serial killers have a cute little dinner party together. And lastly for Hotel, like I said, there's a lot of killers portrayed in Hotel. We have the Countess, which is actually based on Countess Elizabeth Bathory, who was a Hungarian serial killer. Her murders took place between 1590 and 1610. She is noted as one of the world's most prolific serial killers. She tortured and killed over 650 young women. The rumor is that she bathed in their blood to retain her youth, but this is just a rumor. It was told many, many years after her death. You can clearly see the inspiration for Lady Gaga's character, but of course you guys know how I feel about fictional killers being inspired by real ones. I don't think it's that bad. Roanoke is of course based on the infamous 16th century lost colony where 112 to 121 colonists disappeared in North Carolina. They do portray a lot of the lost colony in the show. Some of it is almost a direct portrayal because they have a leader named Thomasine and in real life, John White, who was the leader of the colony, his wife's name was Thomasine with an E, but it wasn't likely that she actually killed her colony. I mean, we don't really know, right? Because it's a lost colony, but in the show, show they portray her murdering her entire colony, which probably isn't reality, so it probably doesn't apply to this video. So the only other killers that were portrayed or inspired by in this show were Miranda and Bridget Jane, were, which were the sister nurses in the show. These women are loosely based on Gwen Graham and Kathy Wood. So Graham and Wood were actually nurses aides in a nursing home based in Michigan and were convicted of killing five elderly women. American Horror Story portrayed them as sisters who killed together, but in reality, they were actually a couple. Again, although inspired by Gwen and Kathy, Miranda and Bridget were clearly not direct depictions of these women. Roanoke is probably the most tame season when it comes to portraying real life events or real killers in my opinion. Although much of the story is of course based on other people, I don't think it comes across as exploitative at all. So we couldn't have a season named Cult without a few famous cult leaders, now could we? Let's start with Charles Manson, shall we? So Evan Peters played like six roles, I think, in American Horror Story Cult, and four of them being famous cult leaders. The most gruesome portrayal was probably Charles Manson. They did, in fact, recreate the murder of Sharon Tate and her friends in her home that happened uh, by the Manson cult or family, whatever you want to call it. And although I imagine that this scene and murder was more accurate than other portrayals of this murder. It was extremely, extremely disturbing to watch and they definitely took it too far. I think that you can do a tasteful movie when portraying a real life killer, such as in Extremely Wicked. You don't actually see any of the, any of the murders. They don't recreate a lot of the murders, which is 
perfect. And comparing it to The Haunting of Sharon Tate, which watch my video on that if you haven't seen that. Um, is it more offensive to portray the story as fiction and change a lot of things and make Sharon Tate become a ghost and things in the end? Or is it more offensive to portray the reality of the events but go too far in showing what happened and make it more graphic than they really needed to be. So most of the cult leaders that Evan Peters portrays in this show take place within one episode called Drink the Kool-Aid. So we have him represent Marshall Applewhite from Heaven's Gate, David Koresh from Branch David Davidians? Davidians? Jim Jones and the People's Temple. Now, while I was researching for this video, I saw a critic from Entertainment Weekly rated this episode and loved this episode and said that the cult flashbacks were a solid blast from the past. That's a very interesting way to describe it. That almost makes it sound like it was a fun ride, you know, like looking back on memory lane of all the famous but deadly um, mass murderers slash cult leaders that we've had in our life, not in our lifetime, in our history. Generally beyond the over the top portrayal of the Manson murders, I don't think that the other portrayals of the cult leaders were done in poor taste or exploitative or took it too far. I mean, they do fit the theme after all. At one point, Jesus does come down, also played by Evan Peters, and resurrects Jim Jones, which I think is a little odd and just horrifying of a concept in general. And I think Jesus is supposed to represent the biggest cult leader of all, which that's their implication, not mine, just saying. <laughs> Now, as far as I know, Apocalypse doesn't actually portray any killers based in reality, which is great, right? Well, there was one giant flaw with this season, specifically episode six called Return to Murder House. So Tate Langdon reappears in this episode, and I think that they wanted to use this opportunity to do a little bit of damage control with his character because when we watched Murder House, we did indeed feel sympathy for his character. And I think between Murder House and Apocalypse happening, there had been a variety of of shootings that had occurred. So they then wrote into the story, they blamed the house essentially, saying that it infected Tate with its evil and made him do terrible things beyond the shooting. If you've seen the season, you, you know what I'm talking about, what other horrible, horrific things he did in that season. You know, he created a devil child that is now the antagonist in the apocalypse season. So as we know, Violet and Tate are ghosts trapped in murder house and Madison shows up and basically tells her that the evil left with Michael, who was Tate's son, and that all that's left in Tate is the good. This all felt so forced, and I hated this storyline as a viewer, and also they just brushed off the fact that Tate was a school shooter and was just a horrible person in life and in death. And to just write it off and say, oh, he created an evil son, therefore all the evil left him, and now he's just pure, he's so good. And you can forgive him now. And now it's almost like they're giving us permission to root for Tate and Violet and now they're making him like a protagonist. It was only in the one episode and the one scene, but still they're making him seem like a good person all of a sudden. And that just left a bad taste in my mouth personally. But that's all that's in Apocalypse. So that brings us to the most recent season, 1984. I think a lot of people, when you saw the marketing of the season, thought that I would actually really like it because it's based on 80s slashers, of course, and it has like that camping vibes and things, which generally I love. And then I think there was a group of you that thought once we saw who was portrayed in the show, it would automatically become my least favorite season, which is not the case either. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It's not my least favorite. It's obviously not my favorite. Um, but yeah, go watch the ranked if you want to know where it ranks. But it is clearly the most blatant portrayal of a serial killer that American Horror Story has ever done. Richard Ramirez is a full-on character. At this point, I had just become tired of American Horror Story portraying real serial killers. Like this is like the 20th or the 21st one we have talked about in this video and I am just exhausted. They always seem to portray them as some kind of character whom we can sympathize with, who some people will root for, and we just do not need that for these real life killers that are directly depicted, especially for Richard Ramirez. He is already one of the most romanticized serial killers in our history. And again, I'm not completely opposed to 
them casting who they cast for him as someone who's conventionally attractive to play Richard Ramirez because he does look a lot like him. And that is more accurate at the end of the day, but giving him a full on love story and immortality. They also kept certain real tidbits of Ramirez's personality, such as the fact that he did indeed like Billy Idol and he had a foot fetish, which is kind of portrayed in the show a little bit. And if anything, these things are just gonna make people romanticize him even more. And keeping these things in, even though they were real, he did have these actual traits, still when they're portrayed in a fictional storyline, it makes him feel like a fictional character. It's not, we don't see him as Richard Ramirez anymore. We see him as a character in American Horror Story. And it makes us as the viewer kind of forget or lessen the horrific things that he did. He did kill real people. There were real victims. Clearly, American Horror Story loves including a little bit of history in their show, and I don't think that all of these things should be considered off limits. Like I said, I generally enjoy American Horror Story, although the last couple have been a little weird, um, but I don't think all touchy subjects should be considered taboo, especially in the horror genre, because it is horror. So of course, sometimes we want a little bit of reality injected into it. However, I do feel like in certain situations and instances, they cross the line a little bit. At least in my opinion throughout the nine seasons we've gotten so far. And like I said before, if you disagree with any of my opinions in this video, please leave a comment. I would love to have a discussion with you guys down below and make sure you go check out my American Horror Story seasons ranked so you can figure out which ones are my favorites and least favorites. And I kind of do take into consideration what is portrayed in the show. So definitely go check out that video. Also comment your favorite American Horror Story season down below. So that's it for this video. Let's see how long this ends up being after editing. I'm a little bit nervous. I think I've been filming for an hour. So yeah, it's gonna be a long video, but hopefully that gives you lots of content to watch in this quarantining time. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.